Hello. So here we are again in our wonderful weather app. And uh, what I'd like to do now is I'd like to go and get the uh, the data off the internet. Okay. So uh, remember we had these steps here that said, you know, request data from internet, right? And then we're going to wait for a reply, and then we're going to receive data and process our data, okay? So actually, you know, all of this is going to happen in this next block that I, that I type here. So, uh, so the first thing we got to do is we need to make a request to our weather service. And I'm using this weather service here called uh, Open Weather Map. And we'll go back to their service here, and here's where I'm at. Um, I'm at their homepage here, and they have uh, an API, so I'll click on the API. And they have a couple APIs here. They have, you know, current weather, you know, 5 to 16 day forecast, historical data. And what I want to look at is I'm going to use this, uh, this current weather data. So I'll, I'll click on more. And if I scroll down here, it says, you know, you can get the weather using the city name, the city ID, or geolocations or something, right? And there's a couple links here. It says JSON data and XML. So we're going to use this address right here, openweathermap.org. Let me zoom in on this a little bit closer here. And if we look at this, this address, you know, if I click on it, you can see it pretty much just put that address in the URL, and then this is what the address returned. Okay, so this is what we're getting. This is in the JSON format, right? Let's go back. So what, what is this? Well, this is just a regular, you know, URL all the way up until the question mark. And then after the question mark, um, this is called the query string. And the query string contains a variable, Q in this case, and a value, London, UK. So, uh, so you know, the query string is formatted as variable equals value. Okay, and it follows the, the question mark. So this is really the URL up until the question mark. And then this is the, uh, the variable right here. Okay, so let's, uh, let's go to that address and copy the, the URL here. And then I'm going to switch back to, um, to Xcode. And, you know, for convenience, I think at the top of my open weather map class, I'm going to uh, define a var with let. So I said let, and then we'll say open weather map URL equal this address. Okay. And uh, we, we actually want to replace this with, you know, the city name that you are supplying to this get weather function. So... I'm going to remove the um, everything on the end of the URL to the right of the question mark, including the question mark. Okay, so this should be, you know, HTTP API openweathermap.org data 2.5 weather, and then ends right there. Okay, so now back down here in the uh, the get weather method, let's set up a um, a request object. So I'll say request equals HTTP task. And this is an object. It's another class, just like the class we made. So, you know, we make an instance of that class in the same way. You say the name of the class, follow it with the parentheses. Right, so there we go. And now we're going to have to assign to this class a, um, a response serializer. So when we get a response, it's going to, you know, format the response in a certain way or deal with the data so it looks you know, like a certain form of data, right? So I'm going to um, set the response serializer to, um, uh, what is it, HTTP response serial, no, uh, actually I want the, uh, what is it, JSON response serializer, right? Because we're, we're getting JSON data. So I'll type in JSON response serializer. Okay, and that's another object. So we put the parentheses at the end. And if you want to see some more information, you can hold the option key and, you know, click it. And then it'll tell you what it is, right? And it says, oh, that's a public struct in uh, 
you know, in this other class here, you know, it's declared in HTTP response serializer, which is one of those helper files we have, right? Okay. So now, now that we've got our request set up, we have to actually execute the request. So to do that, I'm going to type request.get, okay? And I'll, I'll just start typing get, and then I, I hit return when I see the, the names come up there, and then I let Xcode just type the rest, because this one's a little, it's kind of long and a little complicated, so we want to make sure that Xcode types it all. So the first thing here in the request um, method, the first parameter is the URL. So the URL we have up here as open weather map URL. So let's copy that name and then I'll click on this blue area here and paste, right? And so it'll replace that with the, with the name that we have here. So that's a little bit shorter than typing this whole thing. And next is the parameters. And this says it's a dictionary with string followed by an any object. So this dictionary, you know, if we just want to type a dictionary, we can type the two square brackets with a colon and that makes an empty dictionary, okay? So the way this works is the dictionary, remember up here we had the, uh, you know, um, let me actually type it down here. Remember we had the uh, question mark query equals city name, right? Okay. And in, in that last case it was London, um, you know, they put the comma UK like that, right? So what we want to do is we want to set this up so it looks the same way. So what I want to do is I want to say Q, the key is going to be the, the value here, and then the value following the key is going to be the name that we see here. You know, and then you could type it London, UK, or just London, right? Okay, and uh, so that's our that's our parameters, right? And we might we can include other parameters here. We'll we'll need to include our API key too later, but uh, I think it'll work right here with just the name, the city name. So now that we've got the parameters on there. Now we've got the success. Now success looks a little strange there, but success is, is a function. So this success parameter takes a function, and that function um, receives a, an HTTP response object and returns void. So that's why it's written this way. This is the parameters, and this is the return type, okay? So to make this work, um, it's a little... It's a little strange, a little arcane to write the syntax for this if you're not used to it. So what I always do, you know, because I'm, I'm still new to Swift too, but right. So I, I, um, I select it here and then I just hit return on the keyboard. And then it kind of explodes and in, into the correct syntax. Okay, let me undo that and we'll do it again. So this is what we had before. You know, if this one's highlighted and I hit return on the keyboard, then, you know, Xcode writes the correct you know, syntax for me. So now you can see it ends here at in, and then there's a line return, and we go down to where it says code here, and then failure was the um, the other, you know, the next parameter there, right? Let's, I just undid, let's do it again, right? There we go, okay? So we gotta do one little thing. This um, HTTP response, that's the, the, the type for this parameter. So what I wanna do is I'll just hit return so it writes that, and then in front of it, remember you always say variable name colon the type. So I'll say response colon, and then I'll have this HTTP response here, right? And then it'll say void in, and then after in, we're gonna put the block of code for our function, which goes here, right? So I'll click on code there, and let's just type the two comments for the moment. And now let's move on to our next parameter, failure, right? So, you know, if we make a request to the internet and something happens and we don't get any response or we go to an address that doesn't exist or, you know, there's many many ways that this can fail. And if it does fail, then, you know, what, what's going to happen is the request object is going to execute this block of code right here following failure. So I'll take the same strategy I took on the first one. I'll, I'll highlight this area here. Just You can just click on it once, right? And then I'll hit return on the keyboard, and then Xcode will kind of explode that into the correct syntax. And so this, this function here takes two parameters, NS error and HTTP response. So first of all, an NS error, I'll, I'll hit return. So it types NS error for me, and then let's give this a name. We'll call it error colon, and then HTTP response, I'll hit return, 
and type in response colon, right? So here's my two parameters, error and response. And then it says returns void, and then it's in this code block right here. And maybe where it says code there, I'll just put, you know, a comment. And then I'm going to move this over because it reads better for me this way, right? I've got block number one, success, block number two, failure, okay? And then maybe inside here I'll say, you know, print, line, response. And then maybe down here I'll say print, line, error, okay? And then we can test out our our thing here. Why do I have a little a problem there? Unresolved identifier response. Oh, because I misspelled it, right? So let's, uh, let's fix our spelling there. There we go, right? So that should fix it. And then we'll test and wait for the simulator. And now remember this, uh, this get weather for city method is, is invoked when we, um, when we close the dialog box here by, with cl clicking the OK button. So I'll type in a city name here. This is Paris, and then I'll, I'll hit OK. And then it waits for a moment, and then it gets the response from the server, and it says HTTP response. And that's, that's what this is right here. OK, so that's working pretty good. Um, so now, you know, let's, let's get rid of this. And now what do we do with the response, right? So the response, we kind of have to take it apart, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to say, um, first of all, first of all, we're going to convert it to a dictionary, and then um, and then we'll get the little, then we'll convert it to JSON and you know deal with the little bits inside. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to say um, uh, let dictionary equal response. dot response object as dictionary okay so we're gonna get a response object and and we don't know what kind of object that is so what we're gonna do is we're gonna tell Xcode that you know this this as means like hey you know what why don't we treat that as a dictionary like we don't know what kind of class it is but why don't we treat it as as an as a dictionary, okay? And if it doesn't, the question mark says like if it doesn't, you know, if it if it isn't a dictionary, then then um, then you know don't you know it's just nil, right? Don't don't worry about it, right? Okay, so it's an optional. It's saying like hey, you know, if it if it can be treated as a dictionary, then it's going to be a dictionary. Okay, so the one little weird syntax here is if we say a dictionary, remember a dictionary has two halves, right? It's got a key and a value, so we have to kind of say what the key and the value is. So, so this is for the key is going to be a string, and then the value for us is going to be any object. Okay, so we'll say like, hey, you know, uh, let dictionary equal response object as a dictionary with a string and an any object. Okay, and then um, let's try this one out. What if we say print that right? So we'll print it. Let's test it here. And uh, we'll, you know, we'll use the city thing here to, uh, we'll do Tokyo this time, right? If I click OK, then you can see, oh, look, it's got a bunch of data there. Let's, we'll stop the simulator and then pull this window up, right? So this is what our dictionary looks like. Right. So now, you know, it, it's city London. It's not Tokyo because I hard coded the name London in here. Right. OK. So what if we want to use a city name that you type into the box? Right. Well, the city name is is right here and we're passing it to the get weather function. So what we're going to do is we're going to replace London with city. And we don't have the quotation marks around it because this is a string. You know, it's like it's bringing, it's bringing its own quotation marks, right? So we'll put city name there, and let, let's give it another test. So we'll click Run. And then we'll open up the dialog box here, and I'll type in, let's do Tokyo again. 
right? And then I'll click uh, OK. And, you know, it still says, uh, you know, 77 degrees because we kind of hard-coded that in here. But uh, but now let's see what it says down here in the, in the box, right? Because we're actually getting the real data from the Internet and just printing it to the to the terminal. Oh, look, Tokyo. It's raining in Tokyo today, right? So there we go, right? So now we've got the right data from whatever city, and we should be able to do different cities this way. We can just send any city name. And actually, Open Weather Map's actually doing a lot of the hard lifting for us because we, um, you know, we're just sending a city name there, and a lot of cities around the world have, you know, the same name or, you know, something, right? We're not really giving it a lot of information, but it does a pretty good job of finding, finding the right place, right? So, so anyway, so we've got our city there. And, you know, I suppose you could, um, when you type in the name here in the dialog box, you could use the, 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 you know, the country name also. So let's, you know, you could type in, uh, you know, like we could try the London example, like they used London comma UK like that. So we could try that and see if that works, you know. Yeah, it looks like it works, right? It says country Great Britain, city name London, right? Okay. So we can do that. Um, so we're, we're pretty far along here. Why don't we stop this video here and then I'll just make another one, right? Uh, but right now we're in pretty good shape. So at this point, all we have to do is take apart this dictionary and can grab all of the data out, it, out of it to fit our um, the, the labels that we've created in Storyboard. So we need one for the temperature and the description and the date and whatnot, okay?